Breaking news, this just in, letting you know right now that the job market in 2024 is terrible. Yeah, I was laid off twice in the past two years, which means that I have been job hunting for the past two years. And before you say anything, yes, this is a spatula with my microphone on top. <laughs> because you wanna know what's crazy? Even these said jobs, fast food, retail, sales, and a bunch of others seem to think that I am too overqualified to work there. Yet they have signs on their doors and on their windows and everywhere else stating that they are hiring. And when you go into these said places, they are short staffed. That makes so much sense, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> On top of that, you can show that you're the best. You can come prepared and look like me and still get a rejection. You can go through five multiple rounds like I have been through. Six, seven, eight rounds of interviews at said company and still get rejected. What the hell is going on? I need, I need some answers. I need some answers. Can somebody tell me right now? What, 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 what? And see with this video, I know that I'm not gonna be able to post it anywhere else besides, actually no, I should be able to post it, but the only place that I'm not gonna be able to post it is on LinkedIn <laughs> because everyone is crazy on there. Can we, can we be honest? Can we be truthful? I am so glad to have the community that I do and be connected with genuine, actual understanding people that don't leave room for bias and nastiness in their hearts and say all types of crazy things and blame you for everything that you go through. And it's not like I can't hold myself accountable. There's plenty of other people that don't, but it's not like I can't hold myself accountable, right? Because I know when I make my mistakes, I know when I flunder during interviews, I know when there's times where I need to be better at prepping and so much more. But but after all this time, I for damn well sure that it is not my fault. I've had multiple offers rescinded. I've had people cuss me out. I've had scammers. Don't get me started about the scammers, all right? But we're gonna try and do this a little bit in order. If you see me constantly looking over here to the right is because I have a list of so many different things to discuss about this so-called said job market that we are in, that we have been in, and how things have been just terrible over the past couple of years and that there is nobody that's really talking about it, okay? And again, these are from my specific experiences. I understand that you might have something different that has happened to you. That is perfectly fine. You have your own experiences. I have mine. Do not judge me for what I have been through. I'm being open and sharing this. And I would hope that those that don't understand how terrible, terrible, terrible the market is right now, that this video will help you. Okay, let's get started. First of all, the competition is heavy right now, all right? There is so many companies that are laying people off and they're not laying like one or two people off like people usually do, like companies usually do. They're laying off people in the hundreds and thousands. Do we understand how scary that is? And it's not just under one specific type of job or genre. They're laying off people from every sector, whether it's in marketing, whether it's in sales, whether it's in tech, whether it's in whatever that they have at the company, they're picking specific people and just letting their butts go. So now those said people that are now laid off are going to be on the job hunt along with the people that have already been in the job hunt. Do you, do, <laughs> that's gonna make folks go crazy. Do you understand? Because now the competition is heavy. Everyone and their mama is about to be fighting for, 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 for one role, for just one role. And then most of these companies only have a few roles that are open. How do y'all even make those decisions? Because they say that it's not the type of thing where people choose like maybe somebody that's doing less work or you know, there's chances that they don't really, how do you guys choose that? And how are so many people not having hearts towards that? How are you guys not having plans and, and things to help those people that you do lay off? It's not like you got fired by not doing your work. There's people that have been at companies that are getting laid off that have been there for 10 plus years. How do you give your heart and soul to somebody, to a company, just for them to just let you go like you, a piece of trash? That's that's not that's not okay. And now we all fighting each other. We all fighting for the jobs now. A hundred something plus people applied for one role. A thousand something people. I'm seeing posts on LinkedIn where they're saying a thousand something people applied for one role. Huh? 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 A thousand people? A job uh, for, for one role? It's, 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 it's getting out of hand because now it's like we have to do all these hurdles and do all these things just to stand out because all these people are fighting for the same position that you applied for. Bonkers. What the heck is an ATS? And why does everybody seem to have a different one or they don't understand how it works or they do know how it works, but then they say that it doesn't work that way and then they're trying to tell everybody that it works a certain way and then 
I need somebody to just get, get, I need all these companies. I need y'all to use one type of ATS system, applicant tracking system to put our resumes through and keep it, keep it at that. Because I keep hearing that there's all these different ones. There's ones where you can use keywords. There's ones that you use AI and that, that there's knockout questions. So like, if you don't have a certain amount of keywords, they go knock you out. What's the truth? Because I, 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 there's so many people that are saying one thing and then there's other people saying another and it doesn't make any sense to me. So I need to know exactly what the truth is. Because is a human even seeing my application? Be, be honest, be real. Because some of y'all are saying that 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 ain't no human looking at my stuff. What what why is there no human? Why is there no human looking at my stuff? I don't I don't I don't appreciate that. Especially when I've you know tried to fill out every single don't get me started with work day. Work day work day what what's up with y'all why why do y'all make us fill out every single section on your on your system you guys have to be the worst ats out there it should be as simple as having an ats that pulls up my resume if it's specific to the job y'all look at it and y'all know if i'm qualified or not because all this ai this ai that hey i need a job i need y'all to quit it right now okay And then we got the unrealistic job requirements, right? So this is what we're gonna do. I have it pulled up right here. I blocked out some stuff because I don't know how y'all be acting. I'm not trying to get sued because I pull up a specific sort of company and I pull up the thing of the job application that I'm not trying to get in trouble. But we, we, I have some screenshots, okay? So I'm gonna read it off to you. Hopefully it'll be on the screen. We'll see what happens, but I'm gonna read this off to you, okay? So let me pull it up. So this right here that you're seeing is for a social media strategist role. Understand, I am, that's what I do. That is currently what I do. I went to school for digital filmmaking and marketing. I learned all about that. Okay. <laughs> I went to junior college for communications and media studies. I have been doing social media for almost more than a decade. All right. Even within my own personal branding more than a decade. Okay. So this is what I do. I have a resume that shows it all. I have a portfolio that shows it all. Literally, I, I have stuff from just a single year that can show that I can do the freaking job. Okay. That's what I want people to understand. But this is what, this is what we're dealing with. I don't know about other sectors and, and, and different jobs and stuff like that, but the marketing field and the social field is bad, right? right now. Okay. This job is located in New York City. New York City. The Big Apple. New York City. One of the most expensive cities to live in. And they are offering 60,000 to 70,000 a year. And before you're like, "Oh my gosh, there will be so many people that would be grateful for that." I'm a millennial, so I have worked jobs that I hate it for way less than that and done stuff that I truly shouldn't have been doing. So once we get into the details of what you will be doing for this job, you will definitely think you need to be making more than that in one of the most expensive cities to live in. Correct? Right. Let's continue. So this is what you'll do. All right. This, this, this is, this is what you'll do for the job. <laughs> this is what you'll do for the job. Okay. You will lead, create, and execute content plans across the brand social media portfolio, including but not limited to Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, X, and Threads. That's understandable. Most social media strategists have to be well known in every single platform, or at least the platforms that are the most popular. There are instances where companies are capable to hire specific people for specific platforms, and we love y'all for that because it leaves a lot of stress to be released from that one person that's trying to handle every single thing that y'all are asking for. But most companies don't do that. They only have one person that handles it all. And we're mostly just used to it. So that that's fine. I'm not extremely, I wish we would have better, but I'm not too upset by that, okay? Actively and diligently monitor social media platforms, discussions, and trends helping lead the charge on the brand's participation or reaction. Makes sense. That's what we do. Manage creation and presentation of content with an appropriate copy and posting cadence. Again, understandable. I'm not tripping off of that. What we're about to see more is what I'm tripping off of. Demonstrate excellent copywriting and grammar skills, ensuring both factual accuracy and social relevancy across all platforms. Most social people are copywriters. I've had to learn that and, 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 and take classes and get certificates just to be able to copyright and make sure that what I'm posting and saying is not crazy and that I'm 
I'm not copying it from somebody else. But there is, again, many times where you hire a copywriter for that. You hire somebody that the social media strategist will talk to and they will be like, okay, this looks all good, you're good to go. That's what teams and having so many people is for. Again, I guess it is what it is. Now, this is where you lose me. Manage and execute weekend content strategy, including coverage of the brand's matches as required. Now I get it. Most people, they, you know, some people, they work weekends, you know, life goes on during the weekends, you know, but why? I'm already working throughout the weekend. Now you want me to work on the weekend. That reminds me of jobs that I've worked in the past where they were like, yeah, we kind of need you on 24 seven for $60,000 a year, baby. <laughs> okay. Sure. Brainstorm, ideate, and build consensus amongst colleagues. Exercise excellent judgment when making daily decisions. It's just, it's just so much jargon and a lot and it's like, of course, I'm a human that's at work. Of course I need to do that. You know what I mean? And that's what you see in a lot of these job applications. And it's like, sometimes I'm like, maybe you don't want a human. Maybe you want Wally. You want Wally. You want a robot that can do it all for you. I'm not Wally. I'm not Eve. That's, that's all that I'm saying. Closely track emerging trends, tools, and platforms within the social and digital space. Again, that makes sense. Integrate influencers into social content, widening club appeal to adjacent cultural or sports and entertainment space. Places. So this is a sports brand, but it seems like they want you to kind of know everything, which I think is very, very difficult and going to be a lot of stress towards the one person that's working this specific role. Leverage social media analytics to generate more impactful social campaigns and content. Again, makes sense. And then infuse the brand's social team with new ideas, forward thinking, and a passion for content execution. So that's what you'll have to do at this job, right? Right. Okay. Got it? Cool. This is what you'll need to bring in order to even be the person that works this job. You need three plus years of experience in a professional social media role with direct publishing responsibilities. Now, to me, that sounds entry level because you're giving me entry level pay and you're asking for entry level years, right? Because you've only been, you they need only three years of what you've been doing correct? But from what you're asking me to do doesn't sound entry level, especially as a strategist. It sounds more junior to even senior level. And what you're offering is not junior to senior level pay. And people need to live, especially in New York, where it's not cheap at freaking all. So you need to have excellent communication and copywriting skills. Spanish language working proficiency is actually preferred because I'm pretty sure it's soccer. Yeah, it's soccer. Expert knowledge of international soccer, including MLS and the culture around the New York City and North American games. Finger to the post on international NYC culture and current affairs with flair and mature editorial judgment to participate in NYC FC sport adjacent conversations. So again, you need to know everything else too. You need to know film fashion, gaming, music, what? You also need to have experience concepting, pitching, and editing content from start to finish with strong creative visual storytelling skills and attention to detail on publishing. I'm bringing a lot to the table for 60K. I'm bringing a lot, that's all I'm saying. Must be able to follow instructions and learn from constructive criticism when given and be a team player collaborating to support business goals across the organization. Knowledge of social media content management and reporting platforms and experience with Adobe Photoshop at Indus design. So you're going to be doing graphic work as well. You're going to be doing it all <laughs> at this job and you need to have social video editing experience and skills. But this is where this job loses me. And whenever I see something like this, it really just, it, it not only pisses me off, but it just irks me because there's so many people that are just going through so many things that they're just gonna accept it and take it. And it's like, babe, you deserve better than this. And there's so many companies that do deserve better than this. That's why it's okay to be picky, you know? It's okay to really do your research on these companies and figure out if this is gonna be a good fit for you or not. Because this last bullet point says, able to work a non-traditional work week, including nights and weekends. All that screams to me is that we need you 24 seven. We need you during the day. We need you at night. We need you on the weekends. You're not getting a day off. I'm sorry, you can't have a day off. And even on your day off, we gonna bother you because I've worked at places that has set that exact bullet point. And even on my days off, 
they're calling and texting me 24 seven. And there needs to be a space between professional life and regular life. You can't, you can't, you can't just have me 24 seven. That's not right. Not for no 60,000 to $70,000 a year. I know that much. And these are the type of roles that are constantly being put out there. Like this isn't the first one that I've seen that says crazy stuff like this, that it has all these high expectations of you that will make you go crazy. This next one is just mostly about the room for like bias because a lot of people are getting, especially in this field that I'm currently in, into contract and gig work. And contracts are not long. Sometimes you'll have a month contract. Sometimes you'll have two, three a year. It really doesn't matter, but you'll still be under that said company doing that hard work. And I have done so many contract roles for a plethora of different companies, companies that you know and use every day, but they have not hired me due to specific certain circumstances. And even at said places that I've worked before, I've done contract roles still working there because sometimes what I make at said company is just not enough for me to live, unfortunately. But now there's this space where people are so biased towards that, that they find it as like a short stint and they think, oh, because this person wasn't there long, they're just gonna up and leave. I get it, it's an investment. You spend all this money on that said person to be at the company. But there is a bunch of different reasons as to why that person was there short, whether it's the culture, whether things have changed, whether they were laid off, so many things, okay? And sometimes it's just not your business. It, it really isn't your business. Why are you looking at that when you should be focusing on the work that I can actually do and the work that I've actually done? That's beyond. And I think that's really weird when recruiters and hiring managers and people that are part of the hiring team even think of things like that. It's just weird. It's weird to me. I, I just don't know because I've gained so many different networking and open opportunities because of contract work and because of gig work and because of freelancing. I don't know. That's just me. I don't know. And do we forget this next point? It's gonna be talking about this. It's a very sensitive subject. People are acting like for the past four years, COVID was never a thing. Like we weren't all just working from home. Like businesses and companies didn't have to shut down. Like, and because of that, some companies even closed in general and can never reopen back up again. And that may be the short stints are because of that, especially if you're coming from the end of 2019 to now. I don't know what, I don't know what realm, what dimension some of these people are in to not understand that. Like we weren't just at home every day. <laughs> Mm. Then on top of that, all these people keep saying, oh, you need to network, you need to meet people, you need to network, you need to meet people. I'm a people person and I'm already tired of, I'm tired of people. I'm tired of networking. Why do I have to keep networking with people that can't even get me the dang job in the first place? I've networked with so many people that have given me referrals and yet I'm still here job searching. Make it make sense. And then don't even get me started about some of the people that just treat you, just treat you like boo-boo. There's so many people that treat you like trash because you are unemployed or because you're a freelancer or because you're like in between jobs, whatever it might be. And I don't, I don't, why, why are y'all like that? You, dude, you could be in the same boat as the person that is talking to you. And then half these people on LinkedIn don't even answer their messages. They come every couple months to post that they updated their new job or that they, they're looking for a new job. And now because of these past couple of years, the main reason people are on there is because they're either looking for a job or they want to show themselves off. It's so unrealistic. And, 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 it, and it just bothers me because it's like, we should be all, as humans, we should all be looking out for one another. Then on top of that, there's so many other biases. Your age, homophobia, racist. Oh no, it's not in the workplace. It's not in our workplace. Be for real. Like, come on y'all. We gotta be serious for like two seconds. And I don't mind if it's like, you know, people are trying to work on it or it's like stuff going on, but like I've worked so many places where it's rampant and people just deal with it. And that's why we're in the mess that we're in now. At the end of the day, a lot of people don't see other people as humans. They see my color first. They see what I am first before and, and, and already have a judgment of my character and who I am. Whether I'm young, whether I'm old, whether I'm black, whether I'm white, it's just, it's crazy. It's just really crazy. Like, just see me for the work that I've done. That's all. That is all that I ask of you.
and do not get me on salary stagnation because just like I was talking about earlier, some of these roles, y'all be talking about they entry level and there's not enough entry level roles out there for anybody really. And there's barely any junior or senior levels either. Some of these roles, it's like y'all are paying pennies on the dime and you think that's okay. And forcing people to do all this work, all this work for, for it's like cheap labor. How do you, how do you think that's, that's okay? That's no, that's not okay. That's not. And all of this is strongly affecting everybody's mental health. Don't get me, my mental health has been shot, shot. I've had interviews, I don't even wanna tell y'all the number of first round interviews I've had. And I don't even wanna tell you the number of excessive amounts of interviews that I've had. And you know how my, my brain, I don't, my brain cannot keep up, it's fried. It is literally fried. And then you have to deal with everything else on top of that. You have to deal with, with your life. You have to deal with bills, your goals, your dreams, relationships. It's, it's terrible. And and there's people out there it, it, it I'm trying not to get too emotional at this part but it's it's there's people out there that are willing to end their lives over not having a job and by the way that they're being treated there's people on LinkedIn cussing each other out going in people's messages and cussing them out they're scammers scamming people because they are so desperate for a job to pay their bills and everything is so high groceries is high bills is high people are in debt credit card debt they can't even pay for it because they're unemployed it's unfair and it's not not right and so they think the only thing that they have left is to end it all and people don't understand that people don't realize that because they're so selfish at the end of the day and that's not okay and they're doing all that they can they're literally doing all the best that they can and they try to like reach out to recruiters oh my gosh oh my gosh there's so many recruiters that will ghost you, be unresponsive, go on LinkedIn, go on these rants, and now it's like recruiters versus job seekers. And that's that shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like that. And I get it, there are a lot of job seekers that need to understand like they're doing the best that they can. But at the same time, recruiters, you're employed. Like you 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 need to get off your high horse and not, not you don't need to do that. Like I, you're gonna deal with people that are unrespectful and like that will make you feel less than. But at the end of the day, at least you get money in your pocket you don't deserve to be treated that way but you also don't deserve to treat job seekers like that either stop ghosting them stop being unresponsive it's it's just it's not right and i understand that you have so many people and so many all these you have all these interviews you got to go through and you have all these these resumes and stuff like that you need to you need to be courageous sweetheart i'm gonna have to say it but you need to be courageous and whoever you need to speak to whether it's your manager whether it's the people hiring blah 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 you need to stand up for yourself you need to stand up for yourself and make some changes and say we need to cap it at a certain number. It's This is too many applicants for me to go through. Ask for some help. It shouldn't just be you going through that by yourself if it's too many, if it's too many applicants, if it's too many resumes you gotta read through. And, and be truthful and be honest and be somebody that these job seekers can look up to. Because at the end of the day, we're relying on you. We're hoping that you can see through all of the noise and look at our resume and be like, this person is the perfect fit. And then start getting these interviews running and see if this person can even prove themselves because so, I know there's a lot of people that can't no matter if they do have the work or not but there is plenty of people that you are missing out on because of that all it takes is a simple email sorry we picking somebody else and I know it gets annoying because I get annoyed because I get rejected for jobs that I know I can do I've always looked and been thorough through each and every application that I've been trying to apply to and I still get rejected but then sometimes I don't even I have I have an email that's specifically for jobs and I can scroll for days and days hundreds of emails of places that I've applied to that have haven't even responded back to me because you got to remember in this market there's ghost jobs the, the jobs they don't exist the companies want to look like they hiring but they not I've had recruiters even tell me like it's just up to be up that's crazy and then most of the time it isn't the recruiters fault it's the hiring managers fault we know this the hiring manager has these unrealistic expectations of the person that they're trying to hire on and now they're dissing every single person that can clearly do the job they want somebody that can do it at 110 percent even though the ones that are at 80 and 90 can clearly do it. even the ones that are at 60 70 can do it because why would you want somebody that has no room for growth imagine hiring somebody that does it so perfectly they get tired of doing the job now they're like i'm about to look for another one they end up quitting or leaving and now you got to scurry and look for somebody else to do the thing that you've been even hired the person to do doesn't make any sense
and then the hiring processes are too slow and too long. Why are you taking Why are you taking six months to hire somebody? Why are you taking four months to hire somebody? I just saw somebody on LinkedIn say that it took them three months to get hired at their recent role. They had eight interviews with eight different people and an assignment. What? And this is what I want to share. Companies will do stuff like this. You fill everything out and now at the end of the application it says video submission. Please link to a one to five minute video explaining why you are the best candidate for this role. That's what the interview I'm tired of these one-way video interviews, these ones where I gotta get all suited up and booted up and explain myself beforehand before I even, cause you could just easily reject me. That's such a huge waste of time. You can easily reject me from whatever the video is. That rooms, that leaves so much room for bias to, to include any type of video formatted thing because now you get to see my face and judge me beforehand before we even get a chance to talk to each other. And then you have stuff like this. This was on something that I was so excited to apply for because people kept hyping it up. And I'm pretty sure this is a well-known, I don't know if it's a well-known company, but I've seen other people share this specific like role and what they asked for just to apply. This is just to apply, right? And then this explains what their interview process is. So after you fill out the application, it says next steps. Here's what we expect the hiring process for this role to be. It should all go well with your candidacy. This entire process is expected to take 10 weeks to complete. 10 weeks to complete for one job. 10 weeks to complete. 10 weeks to complete. 10 weeks to complete. Some of that time is allotted to celebrate the holidays. I'll be and you'd be expected to start on a specific date. So even after that, even after the 10 weeks and everything goes smoothly, they still gonna be like, well, we actually have to choose the date that you start. <laughs> This is what you gotta do. So this is what happens. You get the application, fill out a form with the basic questions, right? And then you have a 20 minute introductory interview with an HR team member. Oh, so so what's next after that? Another 20 minute culture interview with the HR team member. Why could, why, why, what, what? Why couldn't that just be in one, the culture and introductory interview in one? That's usually how it goes, right? Anyways, so then you have 90 minute in-person interviews with peers and manager. So you don't even know how many people you're gonna be talking to. They give they, they you have 90 minute in-person interviews. It's 90 minutes per person that you're talking to over 10 weeks. And and, and 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 the ringer is you also have a final assignment and a presentation. And then you get an offer or not. So you're 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 y'all are y'all are out of y'all rabbit minds. Y'all are out of y'all rabbit minds. That's what it is. And people are still gonna do all that and still apply to that. So this is what you gotta do to get the process even started. This is what you gotta submit. Your resume, you also need to submit a cover letter and I hate cover letters. A lot of recruiters don't like cover letters because that, again, it leaves room for bias and favoritism. Showing your personality. Seriously, no boring corporate speak aloud. Then you also need to share links to projects or groups you're involved with if you have them. And the last thing you have to do, and they were serious about this last thing because I actually physically was applying to this role, is a drawing of an octopus fighting a pirate. And at first you gotta be like, they're joking, right? They're joking. They gotta be joking. No, they're not joking. And when you scroll down on this application, there's actually a place where you have to submit the said picture. All of this is to say everything throughout this video pretty much sums up how bad everything is right now and it isn't getting any better. And what I want you to reflect on is how you treat unemployed folks, how you talk to them, how you see them. If you are in this said space, be respectful of one another, understand your worth, okay? Even as just a general human being besides this professional world, corporate, whatever. Understand your worth, okay? And also understand that rejection is redirection. Whatever is meant for you will come to you. Whatever dream job it is, whatever you wanna do in life, it's, it will be yours. And don't let any of this outside noise and chaos and mess mess with your head because it, it, it will, it, got, it has me messed up. I'm sitting here crying to friends and family about what I'm going through, but I'm grateful for the opportunities that I get. I know that I have the skill set to get whatever job is meant for me and I won't let anybody else make me feel less than. And you need to understand that as well and get that through your head too. And the last thing that I just wanna say is I'm praying for you, I'm wishing you the best. Feel free in the comments to talk about any of your previous experiences. I would really love to hear some of the stories and things that you have been through because I know that I'm not alone in all this. I know for a fact that I'm not alone in all this and that I hope you get the job that you deserve. I love y'all.